Ferrari, I mean, they are um, a bit of an enigma this year, aren't they? Pre-season, they had the uh, fuel flow meter regulation uh, directed at towards them. There was lots of secrecy about the agreement they came to with the FIA. So there was no way that they could beat the current fuel flow meter because there's this uh, encrypted second fuel flow meter, which they can't read, and it reads the fuel flows randomly. So there's nothing they can do to potentially increase their fuel flow for certain parts of either qualifying or tactically through the race. Um, and equally, we knew as the season started, or as testing started, that they were having problems with their aero. And everyone was talking about it being the aero at the uh, start of the uh, two Austrian rounds. And clearly the cars were off the pace. But in between the two races, Ferrari were very adamant that they're losing 0.7 of a second per lap uh, on engine power alone, which then kind of undermines the argument that they have problems with the aero because clearly the car is struggling in both senses. And the Ferrari looked at a real handful, um, particularly for Vettel in that first race. And I think the wet qualifying uh, really underlined it. I mean, you, you, you observe these things far better than me, but that Ferrari didn't look like a car that was balanced and handling well. And obviously in the wet, power means absolutely nothing. It's all about the balance of the car, not even about downforce. So there's clearly lots of problems with the Ferrari. They brought forwards lots of the aero changes, which they were able to do just by speeding up their production and signing things off so much quicker. And I think a lot of people were expecting uh, Ferrari to have a very big change to their aero. But as we said um, during the uh, first Austrian Grand Prix, I don't think that's what we were going to expect. That's not what we had. When you've got correlation problems, the one thing you don't want to do is suddenly change something for something completely new because you've never actually gone back and worked out why something old wasn't working. So what Ferrari have done is they've actually simplified some of the aero setup on the uh, Melbourne race one Austria spec package and that affected mainly the front wing it affected the floor edge in front of the tires and the diffuser as well but the front wing kind of tells the story the front wing had lots of very complex little curves as it went by past the the front tire and amongst the front suspension now we're seeing a much simpler much more benign curves much straighter curves on the front wing and that's to me suggests that it wasn't so much that they were lacking downforce but consistency that as the car steered and that the car yawed through the corners, the front wing wasn't sending the airflow and wasn't working in the way that they were expecting it to. So this simpler front wing, some uh, more robust changes to the rear of the floor, making more of the diffuser at the very back of the car as well, I think was all about aimed at consistency. And Vettel very much said this, that the car felt more consistent on full tanks. Uh, of, of course, we didn't get a lot of running Friday and then Saturday was, you know, the commit washout as we all saw, as entertaining as it was. So I think Ferrari have got a bit of stabilising still to do on the aero. I think there could be some more parts coming in Hungary that should hopefully sort out these problems, get them to a baseline that they can then work on from. Um, the power unit is a bigger problem. I don't know how much they can claw back. I don't think the deficit is as much as they said. 0.7 around Austria for power alone, and that equates to 70 horsepower. I don't think that far, they're that far off. Uh, we still saw... Some good straight line performances um, from the Ferrari powered engine. No doubt it's down on power. And that means that you've got to decide whether you run with low drag or you lose top speed and you run with some downforce. But that's, you know, the perennial problem of race car setup. Um, I think Ferrari will just stabilise. The problem you've got is you've got people like McLaren, Racing Point, even Renault capable of pushing um, the, the podium runners uh, through to the end of the race. Although the race one was broke up by safety cars, certainly the race two uh, was uh, pretty much a straight run to the flag. Um, and the distance between everyone was so much closer than we were expecting. OK, Mercedes were backing off, but Verstappen was there pushing. And at the end of the race, you know, everyone was uh, trying to get that final podium place. So um, I think Ferrari got quite a task to do. And again, as always with Ferrari, it's not so much about the technology and the engineers. It's about the management and how Ferrari are managing themselves at the moment. And I think lots of eyes are pointed on Binotto at this stage. Um, and is he getting the job done? Is it too much for him to be team principal while still being a very technical person? Yeah, I think that's where potentially the changes will come in Ferrari. Hopefully they'll be very careful and considered changes, not knee jerk throwing Binotto out mid season and then leaving us in a complete void. But I think it's much more about for Ferrari managing where they're going, how they're running their season, how they're running their developments. That's where this stuff always tends to come down to. It's not about the engineers per se.